Welcome to Deep Dive. We're here with Michael Clayton. Just preached a great message on pride and humility. Michael, we're gonna dive deep. <laughs> if we call it gr too great, is that also prideful and it defeats the whole purpose of this? <laughs> <laughs> that was the best yeah, message yeah, okay. ever. Yeah, some of those intros gag. They're like, this, this is the greatest preacher of our generation. <laughs> Michael, Ebert. I humbly present before you yes. the greatest message you've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this: um, please don't email me. Uh, yes, you, you like know what? Second service, I yeah, threw that in there. Second service. You know what? Actually, do email me if you really did not like this message. Please email me at matt dot clayton at the yard church dot com. <laughs> too much fun with that. Yes, yeah. please. I will email you back. You might not like it. Yeah. Great cool. message, Michael. I enjoyed it. Very different message mm -hmm. um, than I've heard from you even just mm -hmm. in general. Where did the idea for this message come from? What's the, what was the beginning? What's the genesis? Uh, David, David, do the beginning. Do the beginning. <laughs> you know, when I was 12, the, yeah. So basically what happens is uh, I, I hope not to burst anybody's bubble. I don't really have this super fancy how I get my messages. That's I kind just of what you do burst read, a lot of puzzles. I just read the Bible. <laughs> And I start reading. I was reading Proverbs 29 okay. this past week. Um, I don't like preparing messages far out in advance. Someone wow. someone gave an old pastor. I brought a preaching calendar to him, and he said, yeah, you're not going to use that here. The last place I worked at. And he's like, we want the fresh bread, so don't. The yeah. fresh bread. Yes, sir. <laughs> the, come on, that old Can Pentecostal. You that fresh, yeah, that fresh bread. bread. So a lot of times, three or four days out is when I'll start prepping the message. Dang. Um, I've always done it that way. And, uh, sometimes, sometimes the day of on Wednesday nights, but God's been good. Yeah. Um, I was reading Proverbs 29 and I kept feeling impressed to just journal all these different scriptures. And it kept going over correction hmm. and just over and over. And I'm like, I was like, Lord, I'm confused. Am I like really missing something in my life right now? Right. Cause I was not looking for it. I was actually on a sabbatical, okay. like a, a semi sabbatical where I was just, off the grid on my off my phone just doing some just reading scripture worship music and doing some house chores yeah and i just kept writing it and just something impressed in me look at belshazzar and daniel hmm. and like because i've never preached from that story yeah it's a i, I mean, mean it's a very that's very what I'm saying, specific like, this one. this message was very unique in the fact that i don't know if i've heard too many messages based off of those stories together. No, and not I mean, you together. just went right over the fiery furnace, the Daniels. Yeah, I went over Den. all the all the popular ones. Yeah, that's the ones I want to hear. Michael, I, went, I don't I want to hear the spooky about, one. <laughs> I don't want to hear about a guy going crazy. Yeah, I went to the spooky one where he loses his mind. Yes, and um, I I just felt impressed. That's the only yeah. way I had. I felt impressed. I was reading it, and I'm like, man, this is kind of hard. But there's correction here, and I just started sifting through it. I wrote all the notes I took it, and the Lord. At all these points, mm. I probably used maybe a fourth of, of what I had gotten when I was reading the passage, like today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, it just kind of narrowed down. Yeah. And, um, and I thought it was going to be a more generational message. It wasn't. It was really about pride and humility because then when I went, I went to the chapter before and I read, I was like, I'm just going to read about Nebuchadnezzar. And I read that passage where he's explaining how he got his reason and his mind back. Yeah. It all just hit. I was like, something is here because i that gave me new eyes i had never seen it yeah, like i don't that. know if so, i knew that actually either i mean i knew i know he went crazy i knew he went crazy i knew he was like running around like a crazy man i knew there was a hand on the wall yes i got some of these highlight stories i knew it, the lord restored nebuchadnezzar but when he said my he looked in the heaven and his understanding came back to him that's i did not know that and i was like he looked to the lord and the lord get made him sound mind yeah like that is of of the era that we're in totally. and the conversations we're in, I'm era, like, era. that's the that's a that's what we call the rhema. That's what we believe is the spoken word of the Lord for a, for a generation at a time. That what we're going in at this current time right now. I would agree, and we won't go through your message chronology, but I thought that was a really strong point. Is we have so much mental health issues going on right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you and I just recently read a book um, talking about this. Right, bad therapy, which is an interesting book about how we're pretty much we've never had more mental health professionals in the world and right. never has mental health been higher. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? It's a lot. <laughs> we have more conversation. Yeah. More people applied yeah. 
to the problem yes. and less solutions. Yes. And we are getting <laughs> and the worse. same amount of solutions. Yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. actually getting worse. Yeah, we're actually getting worse. It's like it's one of the few uh, things where we never focus more on mental health and yet we tend we're people are more and more suffering it. Right. And I thought your point was solid there. So it, it was a, you know, and it, it, it can kind of come off as like a real super preachy, just like, just, just, I know you're depressed. Just look to God. Uh, yeah, like, I and mean, it can come off a bit calloused but you've, for what people go through. I mean, you've talked about times that you've dealt with. hundred percent. Right. Horrible depression. Right? I'm not, I'm not blowing your game up right now. No, right. No. Horrible depression. I talk about it with our, with students a lot. Depression okay. and suicide been there yeah. like mentally. Yes. Um, and really going to the Lord was my solution. Right. Um, it just, it was my solution, you know, and, and going to other people, maybe give your, give, give you relief for a moment. It yep. just didn't seem permanent. Yeah. And you're like, I need to get out of this. Yeah. Like, so you're speaking from a point of you've been there. So yes. you're not talking to people who've had mental health issues been like, Hey folks, just look like to the have Lord. had a panic attack. Yeah, totally. And yeah. got with the Lord and felt okay in my mind. Right. Like, yeah. All so in the you've same You've seen this in your own life. Yes. That's yes. awesome. Yeah. 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 I've seen it in my life as well. Uh, I guess now we call it mental health. I used to, I used to call it the ilks. Um, <laughs> back in the days. Yeah, back when call, I was going Called shell shock. They were calling the saddies. Yeah. Um, no, I've dealt with depression and uh, the Lord was my answer. And that is my response to people who are like, how do you explain God is real? I'm like, well, I right. can tell you how God's real in my own life Yes, is I was incredibly depressed and the Lord completely brought me through and gave me peace of mind. I'm sane. Spirit and soul. <laughs> and I am sane. And yeah. I was in a dark place. Yes. And I've seen God restore me when I, again, turned towards him. That was, yeah. I'm going to switch gears a little yeah. bit. Okay. Yeah. You talked about, you hit a point and it was, this is in the story, but you talked about um, a dangerous place to be is when we consider what's holy uh, common. Common. I thought it was a really good point, especially coming as two Nepo babies. Yes. Um, they laughed a little too hard in first they, service. <laughs> <laughs> first service, like, yeah, yes. there's Nepo babies. Yes. Gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, goodness. look, we own it. Okay. Uh, yeah. It just... A foot in the door and so much more. Yeah. Um, Terrible. <laughs> but yeah, holy is common. Yeah, I, I yeah. would definitely agree. That if you, I think one of the problems if you've grown up in church your whole life, as we have, yeah, I I think that is a. I thought that point was really solid. Like, ooh, what am I taking as common? What am I taking as holy as common and treating it as common? In my mm. own life, it's so easy. We've grown up in this church world. Sometimes some of yeah. us, and it's easy. It, you get numb. You take to, nice people for granted. You take safe environments for granted. You take the, your family history or yes. like, yeah. The we, salvation of your own family. Exactly. Like, exactly. Like miracle. You can actually take miracles for not, granted. It's not like and, mom and dad were like miraculously saved. And like, we remember these like super, you know, no, difficult times. Like yeah, we've yeah. kind of grown up in a very, very churched, very quote unquote safe environment. It's right. easy to forget about how great God is. And it can, it can slip into it when it's consistent when you're around it a lot. I mean, it's why I think in the old Testament you see, you know, in that passage, Israel was under occupation of a foreign King in a foreign land. They got there because they rebelled against the Lord. Judges two talks about, they did not know the works of the Lord. They didn't care. Like they just didn't care. Like there's themes in the Bible. When people stop caring what God has done and they forget what God has done, we get in real trouble. Because we're like, yeah, it's expected that you're in peacetime. It's expected that miracles happen. It's expected that that church is a safe place. Yeah. It's expected that worship is is structured and, and good and people are loving and caring. And I'm like, these are holy. These are works of God. Yeah. So how do we, How would, what do you say to the person to say, to say, look, how do I start to take things that are, that I've maybe considered common and make them holy again? Mm, I, I think and to use kind of the term I used a lot in the message, but also in scripture, I think it's very sobering to look at the Lord and say, have I mishandled these things? Mm. So and just asking the question, asking the question, do I just not care? Like is, is, am I callous to these things? Does it, have I just been too casual? Do I get annoyed at the salvation message? Do I get upset if they don't play my worship song? Do I just take for granted if I want to move churches, not because the Lord's told me to, because I'm bored. Like, like just am I bored with stuff? Do I go to church and not serve? And it's just about what they can give me like, or do I serve? And I'm just 
tired of being in the same spot and holding doors open. Like there's all heart checks where first Corinthians 12 says the Lord puts member in the body as he sees fit. Right. And it's like, Lord, you've placed me here. How should I view it? How should I see it? And I think it's fair for all of us to look like, maybe I'm taking some stuff for granted. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, as a staff, we've had, we've had conversations even recently where it's like, man, we've maybe taken some stuff for granted and, and it's, it's humbled us and God's doing good things in that. So really the, just asking the question. Yes. And, and, and being, being open to the answer, being open to the answer, <laughs> being open to the key, answer. I think it's huge. I love how you said one of your lines I thought was really powerful. And this one's going to stick with me for a while is that pride says, I'm going to take all that I want from God. Yeah. And humility says, I'm going to take all that all God has, has for me. me. Yeah. That's a great line. Mm-hmm. Break that down a little bit. I, I it well, I, I think it's a sense of humility. It's just like, it really means anything. The Lord can really tell you anything. Mm. What it's hard maybe in an American culture mindset is that it might not be the ambitious or the good feeling or the, what necessarily feels like the, the happy answer. Yeah. 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 And it's, yeah. God's going to ask you these things by humility says like, God, you can tell me anything. You yeah. can ask me to do anything and I will do it for you. I mean, he's that time where he's like, pull back. Yeah. You're not to be on stage. Yeah. Or, or, you know, you need to serve in that place. And nur- like we have people serving nursery. It was tough for them to come to that conclusion yeah. of being like, no one sees me here. No one recognizes me here, but the Lord sees it and considers it as holy. Yeah. And it, but that takes humility. You'd be like, would you serve somewhere that no one's going to see you except for me? Yeah. And the babies aren't going to say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I think that probably is, yeah, you hit a point where you're not willing to say yes to the Lord. And that's a problem. That's a problem. If you have to have it this way. Yeah. And, or, or you're angry at him. I think that yeah. can be a sign of pride. Yeah. Because you're angry at the Lord because he hasn't, quote unquote, come through for you. Oh, dang. That's a very good point. Or maybe things didn't turn out like you thought they would. Right. It wasn't that he didn't do what he said he was going to do it. He yeah. just didn't do it the way you, you wanted, wanted him to do it. And then you're angry at the Lord. And yeah. that is pride. Because, you're because I mean, it's like when the Lord visited Job. Yes. And he's like, were you there? when I yeah. made the world. Yeah. Were you there when I created everything? Like, yeah, you don't get this. Huh, bud? You're going to, you're going to go up against me. Like I didn't treat you right. Like right. I don't know what I'm doing. And with the cross and the message we have in the gospel, it's even more so. You can't say the Lord hasn't done anything for right. you. Where that's yeah. not the hand we are. You can play it. It is a, it's a rough place to be in offense and in pride towards the Lord. But it's, I don't, I don't think it's impossible. I think there's, I think the message, oh, especially to people who yeah. maybe have been saved for a long time, maybe grown up in a Christian household, I think it's easy to get offended at the Lord for mm. something. And if you're not careful, it can be sitting there uh, and you're unaware of it. Yeah. And, and I think and looking the in the can, mirror and asking the Lord saying like, Lord, what have I not said yes to you? Yes. That's a big question to ask. Do you, okay, so just an interesting thought. I thought you'd find this interesting. So in that Barna study, yep. they were asking, you know, multiple generations, like yes. Z and X and Boomer and Millennial. Interestingly enough, the generation that said that Jesus, the largest percentage of generation that said they take Jesus important was Millennials. What? Yes. 70% of the Millennials asked that, were, that said, they take him importantly. Like they're talking about of all who has the largest percentage in that generation that say that their faith is okay. I'm talking about percentage of the generation. Okay. I'm not talking about like there's, there are statistically more millennials than Gen Xers, right? Gotcha. Yeah. They're looking at percentage of millennials asked like the percentage of those generations, like who responded the most positively about Jesus. It was millennials. Really? The same. Now here's what I'm getting there with this. The same generation that had more than a decade ago was said to be the selfish ones and leaving in droves in their 20s, right? Yeah. Well, now we're in our 30s and 40s, and guess who's coming back? Yeah. To some extent. Now, it didn't say church. It did say to Jesus, though. Yeah. And what I'm trying to say is the Lord can change the heart of people. We had some of the most negative statistics ever brought out of a generation that came out about our own. Yep. And now the tide is turning. That's a very interesting, I'm going to need to see the numbers on that before I believe that. However, I have not been a fan of my own generation. I'm an older right. millennial. You're a younger millennial, right? 
Yes. On the tail end and you're the beginning. I'm the beginning. Yeah. The alpha and the omega. Um, <laughs> I would agree, though. I don't know. I, I think that's an interesting study. That's I, a hard one to choke down. Well, it makes we've me, had a decade of like, it you makes, guys are yeah. the worst. <laughs> and, and out of the millennials came to me some movements from the church that I have not been massive fans of. Totally. Um, I think some of the movements have been good. Some of them have not have been good. I feel like we have, yeah, my generation, I just like to... I don't, I like to make fun of my generation. I like to go after yes. millennials. I so that like, kind of jacks with your whole it thought does. process. I mean, here. blue like jazz, come on. Um, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> he's a very successful businessman, right? <laughs> it makes it's, no sense. That is why. Okay. But here's, okay. Weird point. <laughs> but he changed, right? He makes, he is not the same person. No. He thinks he is. No. He's not aware well, he that he's a very different person. He thought he was really whining. Okay. You books. guys should look at the author of blue like jazz and what he's doing now. Yes. They are not the same no. guy. And he I, says it's the same guy. I like Donald Miller. <laughs> right. And I read blue like jazz i remember going so this is the book that got my whole but here okay so let's let's yes. go in that topic though let's the go. point one of the points let's of the dive, message let's, was like, nebuchadnezzar let's dive deep, Michael. lost his mind yes and to say he lost his mind by his peers and the people around him is correct yep and his mind returned to him so i do have the opti optimism that a generation can walk away from the lord and can come back a generational voice <laughs> pass on the whole <laughs> can we just side note <laughs> In, in this family, we joke a lot that sometimes when people are preaching about generations, they're always calling people out and saying, you are the voice of a generation. And look, y'all, one of like millions of voices, it makes it sound like you're the guy. I don't know. You're Michael. the guy. I don't know. Here <laughs> you're, we the are. Guy. you're the guy. You're the, and I'm like, look, you know what? What if we just love God and and reach people with the gospel Who can, without yes. without being the guy or the woman. I would agree because I think if it's the spearhead. I think if we've seen anything lately in the church world, I think being the guy is maybe not the it's best. It's not working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the mighty, wow. the my my commentary was layered, but the mighty have fallen was a comment yeah. in the message of yeah. like, yeah, we're just stick to loving Jesus. Stick to loving Jesus. Just serve but him well. I serve will say well. this: if you're a right up of the millennials. I, I would be happy. I mean, obviously, yeah. I want to see our generation come back. And I think you're right. I think when you look at mental health and all the things going on, if it's our generation that says and turns and looks at like, look, we spent our, our years, we grew up, because a lot of us grew up with Christianity from, yes. the, from our boomers, right? Because yes. Christianity was thriving in the 90s. Mm, 90s and That's 80s. That's like peak, I hit Oof. peak Christianity. Was well, you I get think when, 90, youth, when youth groups were legitimately a move. Like fire. Yeah. Yes. Like Church of the Move was 180 was three thousand teenagers it was wild three like, two services on i Wednesday remember night. those were the glory days <laughs> uh 1998 was peak <laughs> jesus Golly. in america puka shell necklaces um my sister or sister's calling um <sighs> she probably has comments but anyways <laughs> <laughs> she's like deleted <laughs> so but and then we so we grew up in christianity then all of a sudden we're like we don't want christianity anymore we're we're taked out the church yes. blah blah maybe we went crazy maybe we're coming back and maybe we said, like, I'm coming back maybe to the heart of worship. Yeah. Um, oh, Lord, that pull. Right? Yeah. Dang. Um, maybe it is. And I think, I don't know, I thought your message was fantastic. And I, I will tell you this. If it was pride that led the, our generation off, it would be the humility. humility that leads us back. And I feel like there has been some humbling. Yeah. I feel like they call our generation the bitter one sometimes. Yes, totally. Because things didn't turn out like we thought. Nope. Nope. So now we got am, cigarettes going like, <laughs> Lord's am I, good. <laughs> am I going to be able to own a house? Um, <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no. Um, uh, yeah. I do. The Lord's been good to me. Yeah. But um, it is, I really liked your message, Michael. I thought yes. it was great. I think the, my big takeaway too is looking back and saying, hmm, what are some hurt areas in my life? Right. Broken, dead areas. You yeah. said that pride is the destroyer, which I thought was fantastic. Not just a fall. A fall is like, oh, I tripped. Not a stumble. Oh, yeah. yeah. They it's love that second service. I'm like, yeah, it's not a stumble. It's destruction. It's destruction. Like, what? <laughs> what areas are maybe yeah. been destroyed or dead in my life? Right. Yeah. And then go like, was that pride? Mm -hmm. And then how do I reverse that with humility? I think it's a, that was my takeaway. Yeah. Essentially, it's what I'm going for. Yeah. Well, you it's and I had a relationship issue. Remember? Yes. I yes. mean, <laughs> what do you mean? You what do you mean? We're it. always good. <laughs> <laughs> this was before you came on. Well, where was it? It was years ago. Oh, yikes. Remember, yeah. you and I had some brother issues. Well, because we I, I was a decade gap. Yes. Yeah. I was not the best brother. Um, right. we, and I was living away. Yes. I had become an away. adult. Yes. 
and you yep. had a family and kids. We, I had just come into adulthood, and it was like we had we, our yeah. we had our differences. Yeah, honestly, pride definitely on my end because mm-hmm. I think I had to come to you and just I think I was calling on the phone one day and I just said like I'm sorry I've been a bad brother because mm-hmm. I didn't want to admit that I'd been a bad brother, right? And I didn't want to admit that I'd been distant. And when you had needed me, I was gone. And I admit, called you on the phone. I was like, I'm sorry. I've been right. a bad brother and I need to be a better one. And I fought the entire family. So I had a call. There was a while where you were fighting the whole I family fought, and I was not I happy about that. I fought everyone. Because so I've been, I have been a hardcore defender of the family since day one. Have uh, I not? Yeah, you have. Thank you. To his, to his credit. Matt, Love you, mom. Matt Dad. has been stalwart. Uh, to a fault, Thank you, but Michael. stalwart about the family. I decided to pick a fight you, with every single you person. You went scorched earth I on went the Clayton absolute family. absolute scorched earth. <laughs> In-laws got strays. I mean, like, yep. it was, it, it was just pride. It was, it was out of hurt. I got, I got hurt. I got prideful and said, I'm looking at life as an adult and go, I don't need you. Yep. I'm financially stable. I, I'm in college, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. And yep. I just went to tack. And, and it, it did. It destroyed relationships for a time. But there was a while where it wasn't just, I mean, you and I both added to that. And we talked about this in our last deep dive, which is ridiculous. But maybe we needed <laughs> a therapist. But it was a pride thing on right. my end yeah. of just saying, hey, Matt, just admit that you were not a good brother and that you weren't always there. And it's not mm-hmm. easy to do. But when I, when I feel like I did that and then you did it on your end, there was some humility to the game and yeah. I feel like a relationship got restored Yeah, and it, life got by Brock. Bro- I mean, look at it. Look at us now, Michael. Look at us. Look now. at us now. Look at it. Well, and I think every relationship, Deep diving. It, it's just in seasons of life, there's easy to pride. So you restore it in that season, but then there's something else can happen in life. Totally. And, and it's always something we have to constantly come back to. In yeah. fact, I didn't say this, but I do mean it. It's one of those pride and humility is one of those messages from the Lord that if you feel like it's not for you, it is <laughs> like, <laughs> Like uh, it, it is. You're Got like, nah, em. not for me today. I mean, I get it. There are times where you're like, it's a miss. It's just kind of marriage focused, and you can feel a little disconnected if you're yes. single. But pride's one of those messages that, like, the second you feel like it's not for you, it actually That's a good is. Point. And and so it, it's uh, that in itself is fascinating for sure. I I have a theory. This is my theory. Oh, I, here we go. I think not more. as bad as my cigarette theory, where Al is going to edit the out. <laughs> <laughs> Which was not my theory. Um, uh, my theory is this: that the more humble you are, the more happy you are. So I think, yeah. I think pride is yeah. the destroyer of happiness. Yes, and I think humility brings about happiness. That's my theory. I don't mm-hmm. know if it's right, but the less I think about what other people think about me or care about what other people think about me, yeah, the less that I am worried about what I have or don't have. Probably the happier I'm well, going to be. What's interesting is, you know who really depressing people to listen to are comedians. Mm, totally. Like really famous, celebrated comedians that people laugh at and celebrate yeah. a lot. They're horribly depressing people. Yes. Because life's just all about their work and what they do. Totally. And listening to them on podcasts is, jeez. I'm like, jeez, I need to take an Advil. I'm like, I'm yeah. a headache I listening know. to you just hate your job. Yeah. But th- there's pride in there. People have celebrated you. You think you're hot stuff. And you hate it. <laughs> pride, pride, <laughs> and you're unhappy. Pride leaves destruction. And pride maybe leads unhappiness. That's my theory. I could yeah, be wrong. Yeah, yeah, I think it's tied. Uh-huh. I think uh, it's tied. All right, we've gone on too long. I think both our families are waiting for us so right hungry. now to. Starving. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. We need to head out, Michael. Okay. It's been great. Thanks. Thank you for diving deep with me. Appreciate great it. Great message. I really recommend people watch it again. Um, it's fantastic. So cool. Thank you for sharing. All right. Thank you for being here. See you next week, maybe. No promises. (laughs) This might be the one. (laughs) 